And next thing I know, there's just blood everywhere. <laughs> Come on, Sue, not the old help me, I'm hemorrhaging trick. <laughs> no, I actually broke my arm. Oh, and? Well, Guy was right next to me, and he quickly said it, and he put it in a cast. So, <laughs> so Guy's a doctor? Well, no, he's just a gentleman with a really good first aid kit. Oh. Okay, so he set your arm. Uh, what happens next? <laughs> it's something right out of a fairy tale. Oh, you two went home together and had sex. <laughs> no, we decided to wait. <laughs> of course, you had dinner first. <laughs> Actually, we waited till our third date, but it was worth it because sex with Guy was. Do you remember Kathleen Turner and William Hurt in Body Heat? <laughs> Are you kidding? Do you know how much freeze framing I've done on that video? <laughs> so, uh, uh, tell me some more about Guy. I want to hear some more about Guy. Well, <laughs> he's a successful stockbroker. He's a great dancer. He's uh, very affectionate, warm and caring, mm -hmm. and he has a great sense of humor. But it's never at anybody else's expense. So, what's the deal, Sue? This guy sounds perfect. Well. There is a teensy-weensy problem. <laughs> well, that's good. Otherwise, I wouldn't have a show. <laughs> All right, audience, you want to meet Guy? Yeah. <laughs> Come on out, Guy! <laughs> so, um... What's the problem? <laughs> forgive me, forgive me, I made some laughter. Um, a welcome to the show, Guy. Actually, Dick, when I'm dressed like this, I prefer the name Gail. Well, I like that name too. So, uh, Guy Gail, um, <laughs> sitting watching you like this, you don't seem like all those Puerto Rican transvestites we see in bad sections of town or on Springer. Well, <laughs> that's because those are drag queens thick. I'm straight. I'm just a heterosexual cross-dresser. <laughs> but uh, not all the time, because we have a picture of you dressed as a guy. Don't we, Miller? Can you put that on the screen? Oh, very nice. You're a good-looking guy, uh, guy. <laughs> why, why all this feminine apparel? Could we consider this a form of vagina envy? <laughs> not at all, Dick. I'm not a transsexual. I, I love being a man. Mm -hmm. I intend to keep my organ intact. Now, I don't I'm mean not... to cut you off there, but, uh... <laughs> oh, people, no, people. People. Uh, Sue, how do your parents feel about Guy? My mother's dead. I'm sorry, was it serious? <laughs> it was a prolonged illness. Well, at least she didn't suffer. Uh, <laughs> and, and what about your dad? How does he feel about this? Well, actually, he doesn't know. But he's about to find out. Because he's backstage in our green room right now. He thinks he's here for one of our My Daughter the Matchmaker shows. How will he react? We'll find out right after this. <laughs> Are you a Nazi skinhead who's been abducted by an alien? Then maybe you should call Jerry Springer. Thank you. Thank you, we're back. Tonight's topic, can't help loving that she-man of mine. <laughs> With us are Sue and uh, her fiance, Guy Gail. Could you put your legs together, do you mind? Sharon Stone, you're not. <laughs> Yeah, here's a question for the panel. Yeah. Uh, yes, this is for the man who looks like Joan Crawford. That would be Guy Gill. Yes. Um, when you're getting ready to go out and you're trying to look as much like a woman as possible, mm -hmm. how do you pack your luggage? <laughs> pack my luggage? That's yeah. a very good question. That's a very good question. Come on, I mean, what guy in this room hasn't at one time in their life stood in front of the mirror and played the old pushback game? You know what I mean? There's one right there. I think a few of us have, haven't we? Okay. Now, we're going to meet Sue's, uh, your dad, in just a second, but uh, uh, tell us a little bit about him. What does he do? He's a pipe fitter. 
But uh, what's his job? <laughs> oh, people, no. No, please. Well, that, that is his job. Fair enough. Okay, now I've got to ask you, I've got to ask you, Sue, why are you telling your dad now, here on national TV, instead of in the privacy of your own home? Well, I just figured that my dad would be less likely to kill Guy if we were in front of a national audience. <laughs> well, up until recently, that would be true. Uh, but uh, uh, let's go get Sue's, you want to get, get the dad right now, folks? Yeah! Uh, now, I'm going to walk backstage, I'm going to get him, just remember, he thinks he's here because he's going to be set up on a date by Sue, okay? He doesn't know that his future son-in-law has a taste for chiffon. And I don't mean margarine. <laughs> you put a little flux on that copper pipe, that ought to take you. Oh, hi, Dick. Hi. How you doing? Oh, nice hi. to see you. Welcome to the show. Thank you. How you feeling? Are you, are you, uh, are you well, nervous? Uh, well, uh, yeah, actually, I am a little nervous. Uh, I haven't been on a date since uh, my wife died. Yeah, I heard about your wife. I'm glad she went quickly. Uh, come on out this way. <clears throat> Are you ready? Oh, wait a minute. How's my breath? <laughs> well, it sounds pretty good from here. <laughs> yeah. okay. Let's come on right through here. How about a hand for Bob? <laughs> Have a seat there next to your daughter and her friend. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Hi, Daddy. Woohoo! Not bad, honey. <laughs> oh, Ooh, Daddy. Well, well, Bob, that gal over there is your future son-in-law, Guy. <laughs> Guy? Hi, Dad. That's right, Bob. Because our show today is about men who like to dress up as women. Wait, you—you you mean he's a cross vestite? <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> I think I'm going to be sick. Miller! I understand. Oh, Daddy. Oh, Daddy. Oh, Daddy. Oh, Daddy, 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 Daddy. Daddy, Daddy. Thank you very much. You going to be OK? <laughs> Daddy. Sure, I'll yeah. be OK. No, I'm not going to be OK. I mean, why would I be OK? A man, my woman, my daughter wants to marry is a freak. <laughs> Come on, Bob. You've known me now for over a year. Do I, do I look like a freak to you? <laughs> Bob, Bob, come on. We're living in an age of new diversity, and people are much more giving and more tolerant. Wouldn't you yeah. agree? I'm with Bob. I'd like to kick this freak's ass. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't in heat. Well, that's another way of going. Thank you very much. You see, guys like us, we didn't raise our daughters to be with no sissy boy candy ass fruitcakes like this thing over here. Oh, Come on, God, I'm so glad your mother's not here to see this. Bob, 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 but what isn't what he's doing harmless? I mean, a guy puts on a woman's dress. Haven't you at one time in your life stood in front of the mirror and played the old pushback game? Do you know what I'm talking about, Bob? Well, apparently not. <laughs> it looks like Bob's gonna be a tough sale. Will Guy always be the bridesmaid and never the groom? We'll find out when we come back. From the top secret files at Paramount TV, we can now reveal that high-flying director of blockbuster movies, Penny Marshall, was once dancing to a different tune. She was the hottest stuff in town. Is she a peach? And is that America's top talk show host, Jay Leno? Is that jerk over there the same jerk I think he is? But what happened to him? Or oh, her? I don't know, Laverne. I don't know. Find out in Laverne and Shirley tomorrow at 8.30 on the Paramount Channel. <laughs> Party. A great time to share a bud with friends, no matter where you are. 
Budweiser, proud sponsor of the 96 Summer Games. And he had a feast of lark's tongues and swan's brains. Lark's what's it's in swan's brains? You call that a feast? Look, a feast is a wall's ice cream with knobbly bits on the outside and squishy ice cream around a delicious chunky centre. And no lark's tongues. If it's not a wall's feast, just say... No thanks, your imperial bulbosity. What he's trying to say is, the Argos sale is now on. And uh, you'd be a dummy to miss it. Shake. The Secret of My Success by Michael J. Fox. Whoa! Motivation. Napoleon wasn't as motivated as Alex. <laughs> Relationships. I just can't feel comfortable in a relationship unless I'm number one. Positive criticism. You can be really cunning, devious, and manipulative when you want to be. And self-esteem. What happened to that? A grandiose, self-important, pompous kid we knew and loved. Michael J. Fox in Family Ties, tomorrow at 7 on the Paramount Channel. Boy, was I great! Thank you. Welcome back. We're talking to Bob, Sue, and Guy Gale, and we're trying to figure out who's going to wear the panties in the family. <laughs> well, here to help us figure out this mess is the author of the book, When Your Wife's a Princess and You're a Queen. <laughs> Please welcome relationship expert, Maddie Gelman. <laughs> Maddie, welcome. Glad you could make it. I'd swallow bleach for you, Dick. <laughs> well, maybe another show. You've been backstage listening. What are your thoughts so far? Well, Dick, first of all, Guy has two problems. Number one, he's a transvestite. Number two, that dress. You look like an after-dinner mint with pumps. <laughs> now, as for Bob, yeah. Bob, 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 my heart goes out to you. You're losing a daughter, but you're also gaining a daughter. Wait, wait, wait a minute. He's a man wearing women's clothes. Don't you find that a little unnatural? Bob, many famous men in history have enjoyed wearing women's clothing. Caligula, J. Edgar Hoover. Uh, Janet Reno. <laughs> <laughs> dick, Dick, you fillet me. <laughs> Where I come from, if it looks like a duck, walks like a duck and acts like a duck, it's a fag. <laughs> Bob. Bob, 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 Ix, Ixnay on the egg fate talk, okay? Bob, I get the feeling that there is another issue here, that you're hiding something. Hiding? What do you mean hiding? I'm not hiding anything. Come on, Bob, what about it? Do you have some latent, other than heterosexual experience that you can share with us? No. Bob! No. Bob! No! Bob! No! Bob. Not really. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah. right. I'll tell you. Yeah! <laughs> you see, Dick, when I was young, I served in a little place I like to call Vietnam. I like to call it that too, Bob. <laughs> well, there was this uh, one night. I was yeah. in this bar, see? Yeah. And I pick up what uh, I think is a very cute little Vietnamese bar girl. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know how it is. Things happen. But when I went down for the chow mein, <laughs> I came up with an egg roll. You know what I mean? <laughs> Daddy, if you're worried about Guy being gay, believe me, he isn't. I mean, nobody could do what he does for as long as he does, for as many times as he does, and not be straight. <laughs> Bob, Daddy. Bob, I think I can ease your fears by giving Guy a simple word association test. Word association? Yes. I say a word, and you say the first word that pops into your head. Like, I would say black, you would say white. I would say dog, you would say... White dog. <laughs> I know this game, it's password. No, Dick, Dick, please, just give me a minute here. This test will identify any homosexual tendencies. Okay, Guy, now say the first thing that pops into your brain. Football. Bears. Steak. Beer. KY. Kentucky. 
Straight as an arrow. All right. See, Daddy, I told you. I told you. Oh, yeah? Well, here's my test. You wear a dress, you're a pervert, period, and I don't want you for a son-in-law. Oh, oh, boy, Maddie, as a professional, I don't know how you're going to deal with a bullheaded Joe like Bob. Well, Dick, I would have Bob do some role-playing. I would have him assume the role of a transvestite, to walk a mile in guy's heels, so to speak. Interesting. Ooh. So you'd have Bob dress up as a man dressing up as a woman. Right. Bob, what do you say? Oh. oh. Come no, are you kidding? Uh, uh, oh, no way. Come on, come on audience, what do you say? You know I'd do anything in the world for you, almost, but put on a dress. I can't do that. Can't. Audience, let's try it again, huh? Bob! 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 You're not going to make me look silly, are you? <laughs> of course not. When we come back, we're going to see how Bob looks in four-inch heels and a teddy. <laughs> and a special visitor from somebody's past. Don't go away. Hey, you can get Dick on the World Wide Web. Cruise on by. Welcome back to our show. Now, remember, in an attempt to be more understanding of his daughter's transvestite fiancé, Bob has agreed to wear some female garments, and he's being held backstage by our relationship expert, Maddie Gelman. Maddie, how's he doing? He's just putting on his underwear. <laughs> well, hello, Kareem. <laughs> I think it's time to see Bob. Folks, you want to see him? <laughs> Underwear? Do you feel like a criminal, a misfit, or a freak? Well, I guess it's not so bad. I mean, I don't miss the chafing. You, know? you look great, don't you think so, Dick? Oh, oh he's a sight, all right. Uh... Yo, Dick. Yeah, yeah. You got a question? Yeah. Yeah, I do. What's the freaking point to all this? Uh, good question, Maddie. What's the freaking point to all this? <laughs> The point is to show Bob that even though he's wearing a teddy, he's still the same man inside. <laughs> you see that, don't you? Yeah, I guess so, in a way. Well, <laughs> Maddie makes a good point. So, uh, Bob, now, are you ready to allow Guy to marry your daughter, huh? Oh, no, wait, wait a minute. I love my daughter, but, uh, no, I don't know about Audience, that. Audience, what do you say? Should I... yeah. Come on, what do you say? So I can tell her. Where is she? Well, I think you'll know by the sound of this public domain music. <laughs> Wait a minute, you mean I gotta get married now? Well, that's right. <laughs> okay, Maddie, here come the bride and bride. Don't they make a lovely couple? I think I'm about the Schmitz. <laughs> well, you should have thought about that during the break, Maddie. <laughs> you kill me. You are my goy toy. Oh. Uh, Bob, you look very emotional, like you're about to start to cry. I think I put this thong underwear on backwards. <laughs> okay, now the Reverend Maddie will administer the vows as written by Maddie and her sister Golda. Sue, you see this guy. This guy's in love with you. Guy, you see your Sue. 
now take her hand and say, I do. Maddie, it's a wedding, not a tribute to Burt Bacharach. <laughs> now, if anybody has any objection, speak now or forever... Me! Me! Excuse me. Uh-oh, sounds like we have a comment from an old friend of the yes. groom bride. Uh -huh. He can't marry her. Whoa, it sounds like you know Guy. Oh, yes, I should. He's my husband. <laughs> Wait a second, ma'am. Are you trying to tell me... Guy's the one who deserted you and your two children three and a half years ago? Yeah, that's right. You're married I... with children. Yes, that's right, too. <gasps> Judy and Guy Jr. What the hell's going on here? She's what a complete crazy. surprise. But I think we have a picture of them, don't we, Miller? <laughs> oh, my God, he's a bigamist. How could you do this to me? I, I guess it just slipped my mind. <laughs> she wouldn't grant me the divorce if we'd, we had grown way apart. Ooh. And come on, honey, you've got to understand uh, this. You, you understand, don't you, you Dad? Daddy, get him! Um, Bring his knee! Um, yes. Honey, it's me! You lied to my little girl. Uh, you abandon your wife and kids. You run around wearing women's dresses. I'm going to break every leg you've oh, got. You hold it, mister! Hold it, mister! Nobody's breaking any legs tonight. Not until I do my wrap-up. <laughs> Well, they say there are no more creative talk shows left. But tonight, we had a talk show first. A transvestite bigamist. Eat your heart out, Springer. <laughs> For now, I'm Dick Dietrich. See you soon. Well, go for it, Bob. Go. You know, like many of you, I start my day off in the morning. I reach for a cup of coffee. And then I take the next three hours and I read USA Today. <laughs> and uh, something caught my eye this morning, a two-paragraph in-depth feature on cults. <laughs> Have you heard of these things, cults? They're incredible. Miller, am I saying that right, cults? OK. So tonight, we're going to look at both sides of cults, the kooks who join them and the wackos who start them. <laughs> Our first guest for 20 years went by the name of Rachel, but after running away and joining the children of Yeri, she changed her name to Linda, but she spells it, she spells it Linda with a Y, which makes it kind of creepy. <laughs> Linda, tell us about your cult. We don't call it a cult, Dick. Yeri teaches us that we are all a family. <laughs> Well, uh, what about your parents? Aren't they your family, too? We don't call them parents. Yeri teaches us that they are breeders. <laughs> and why did you decide to run away from your breeders? We don't call it running away. Yeri teaches us that we are embarking on our mission. Boy, breeders embarking missions. Anyone have an English to Yeri dictionary here? <laughs> Yeri wouldn't find that funny. Forgive me, I, I, I wasn't laughing at you. I, I was laughing for you. <laughs> anyway, um, when did you meet Yeri? I met Yanni. Who's Yanni? Yeri's messenger on Earth, Guy! Oh, Yanni, Yeri, tomato, tomato. <laughs> what happened next? Yanni showed me how I was emotionally bankrupt, and he made me spiritually liquid. <laughs> Spiritually liquid, interesting. Uh, so, folks, you want to meet Linda's liquidator? <laughs> and now, here's Yanni. <laughs> hey, 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 knock it off, you two. This is a family show. <laughs> You know, I laughed there, Yanni. I made a chuckle. But uh, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to start my questioning off in a nice, easy manner. But as this show builds, I'm taking you on, man. <laughs> Understand, Debo? <laughs> if 
Fair enough. Okay, Yanni. You are the founder of the Children of Yeri. Now, how did this thing start? Or more importantly, how did it begin? Well, Dick, it came at the lowest point in my life. I had the gun to my head. I had the gas turned on. I had a rope around my neck. You're talking about suicide, aren't you? That's how distraught I was. So I started writing a suicide note. Next thing I know, a force had taken over my arm, making me scribble. I soon realized that these were the holy scribblings of Yeri. And do you know what they said? I say, put the milk out on the stoop and see if the cat licks it up. <laughs> that, that means tell us. Yeri teaches us that the universe is a giant bookcase. Throughout our life, most of us only reach for items off the bottom shelf. Yeri teaches us to use all the shelves. Uh-huh. So your beliefs are really a shelf help program. <laughs> you are starting to believe. No, Yanni, I'm not starting to believe. I'm starting to change my tone of voice. <laughs> Something isn't sitting well with me. I have the list of your membership in my hand. Here are the names. Tiffany, Amber, Kirsten, Amber, Amber. It seems to me that you don't have a male member. No. Oh, people, people, no, people. I'm trying to expose this guy. <laughs> don't make me people you again. Now, Yanni, all these female members, coincidence or just good luck? Yeri teaches us there is no difference between the sexes. We're all similar beings on a shelf. Yanni's amazing. He knows the answer to everything. He can just look at somebody and guess their weight. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's a question. 137. <laughs> okay, well, you're a weight guesser, an amazing ability. I'll give you that. But are you telling me that you recruited all these female members by guessing their weight? Absolutely not, Dick. That's just to get my foot in the door and then we talk, we, we discuss, we interact, and sometimes we sing. You sing, really? I never thought you'd ask Dick Miller. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. You don't call for Miller, I call for Miller. Miller! <laughs> Life is like a shelf, you just have to reach. You have so much wealth. If you let me teach, you'll have a happy day. You'll find a golden way, and life will be so free. If you give everything, everything to me. Say yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, when we come back, we're gonna meet a former cult member who says Jerry's cold is nothing more than a prostitution ring. In the meantime, enjoy the song. See ya, ya, Yeri. From the top secret files at Paramount TV, we can now reveal that high-flying director of blockbuster movies, Penny Marshall, was once dancing to a different tune. She was the hottest stuff in town. Ain't she a peach? And is that America's top talk show host, Jay Leno? Is that jerk over there the same jerk I think he is? But what happened to him? What? Or her? I don't know, Laverne. I don't know. Find out in Laverne and Shirley tomorrow at 8.30 on the Paramount Channel. <laughs> right. Tea break over. Yeah, where's Bob? You know what he's had for breakfast. In the van. Get some water running. Weetabix has got enough whole wheat goodness to help keep you going. You had some too. Weetabix. Once we've started you, there's no stopping you. What he's trying to say is the Argos sale is now on. And uh, you'd be a dummy to miss it. Shake. How do bird's eye cram so much potato into hungry Joes? Well, I'd use a plancha. Actually, we shred them. I'm not a potato. And then we stuff them into a crispy crumb. Have a carrot. Bird's eyes, huge hungry Joes made with real potato and onion. Bad news for big potatoes. And I'm not an onion neither. They could have called him. They could have called him. 
but he's known affectionately. You are lovely. You are fair. You are life and love and care. <laughs> I wrote that for your mother on our wedding night as Dr. Love. No, seriously, it's ba 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 ba. Comic genius Bob Newhart has his own show weekends at 8:30 on the Paramount Channel. Welcome back, folks. Welcome back with us. With us is Yanni, the founder of the Children of Yeri, and this is Linda, one of Yeri's kids. <laughs> and our topic tonight is cults, dens of the devil or year-round summer camps. Our next guest believes they're the former. After a number of fellow cheerleaders became involved with Yeri's cult, she infiltrated the group and has since advanced to the inner circle. <laughs> I smell a TV movie. <laughs> Anyway, to protect her identity, we have altered her voice and placed her behind this screen. Let's welcome to the show a lady we call the Mole. Mole, welcome to the show. Good to be here, Vic. <laughs> Mole, how long have you been a member of Yeri's family? Oh, I can't tell you that. He'd figure out who I am. Well, Yanni, can you blame her for being afraid to face you? She's not afraid to face me, Dick. She's afraid to face herself. Don't believe him, Dick. These shells are just a scam to exploit beautiful young women. The truth is, he's nothing but a pimp. Now, please, let's not make this a racial issue, okay? Sorry. But we are talking about sex for hire, prostitution. Ridiculous. It's not prostitution. Dick? How would you define prostitution? I guess I define prostitution as arriving in Las Vegas and making some phone calls. Dick, 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 dick. This is prostitution and I've got a videotape that can prove it. Finally, something worth seeing. Miller, let's roll that tape. Oh, what have we got here? Who is that? That is Linda. Linda, yes. Keep your eye on her and notice that very short skirt and very high heel. I'll try to notice that. <laughs> now, uh-oh, what's this about, Linda? I, I was just talking to the guy. Yeah, I'll bet not about cleaning his windshield. <laughs> She's asking him if he's looking for a good time. She's merely offering a lost soul some information on how to find eternal happiness. Uh-huh, then why did she get into his car? To pray. I don't know, Yanni. I have seen hours and hours of tapes involving prostitutes. <laughs> I can smell a prostitute when I see one. Nick, it's just a woman soliciting donations on a street corner. And if you think about it, that's no different than a Salvation Army soldier. You know what I think, Yanni? I think you are hiding under the incredibly short skirts of these amazingly that's not beautiful true. women. And I think you're hiding Those are lies. in hidden offshore Those are bank lies. accounts. And thee are the dog of the lamb. And thee that embraceth the y'all shall live forever in the house and of the And I think you're an exploiter, and yes, I think you're the P word. What's going on? He's going into a scribbling trance. A scribbling trance? Miller, get a scratch pad now! This is how the sacred word comes to him. Oh my God, was it something I said? Okay, well, uh, we're gonna see what he's gonna write down. We're gonna go to commercial, so uh, come right back, won't you? Uh, he's not gonna spit or anything, is he? Okay, we'll be right back. Miller, I wanna hand you back. Hey, are you over 40 and still living at home? Call us at 555 Dicky. But you better ask your parents for permission. Okay, we're back, we're back, we're back. We are back. We're back with our tribute to cults. You know, probably uh, no one has been more successful in the deprogramming of cult members than my next guest. He's also the author of the book, Hey, Hey, You, You, Get Out of That Cult. <laughs> Please welcome back to Night Stand our own Dr. Lonnie Lanier. Dr. Lonnie, welcome to the show. Great to be here, Dick. <laughs> Dr. Lonnie, 
what is a cult? Well, Dick, according to the dictionary, a cult is a group or sect bound together by obsession to a person, an idea, or a thing. Well, that could mean anyone who watches Grace Under Fire. <laughs> Now, uh, Dr. Lani, I'm going to come at you from left field on this one, so uh, I'm going to move over here. <laughs> Dr. Lani, how do people know if they're even in a cult? Well, fortunately, Dick, uh, my staffs at the Lanier Institute for the Deprogramming of Cult Members, conveniently located across the street from Scientology centers throughout the nation. <laughs> prepared a list of four questions to see if indeed you are in a cult. Well, Dr. Lonnie, sock it to me. What are those signs? Well, sign number one. You are being followed by a van. <laughs> number two, you have your leader's name carved into your forehead. Number three, you find yourself at more than one party with Tom Cruise. <laughs> and number four, you're getting married to 3,000 people. <laughs> but uh, uh, seriously, Dr. Lonnie, you mentioned Tom Cruise, which made me think of the film Top Gun, which made me think of airplanes, which then laid, made me think of airports, which made me think of Harry Krishnas. <laughs> Dr. Lonnie, are Harry Krishnas a cult? No, they're just a nuisance. Huh. <laughs> Got a question. Yeah, a question for Dr. Lonnie. Yeah, I was just wondering, Dr. Lonnie, is Yanni a typical cult leader, you know, like all the ones we see on the news and stuff? Very much so. In, t in fact, studies done by J.D. Power and Associates <laughs> have shown that cult leaders have two common features. They're charismatic, have a thick crop of hair, <laughs> and they're failed rock musicians. <laughs> failed, failed rock musicians like uh, David Koresh, Charles Manson, Roger Clinton. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, Dr. Lonnie, let's slow this train down and get us back on track. Um, how do you fit into Linda's story here? Well, Dick, Linda's mom came to me about a year ago to help get her daughter back. And? Well, we tried just about everything to get Linda home, from bribery to kidnapping to asking politely. <laughs> then I thought, hey, why not get her on Dick show? <laughs> Which is why we invited Linda's breeder down here tonight. She's backstage right now watching our show and probably rolling over in her grave. <laughs> She's going to meet her daughter in just a few minutes. Plus, we're going to meet someone who Dr. Lonnie actually deprogrammed. Who is it? Find out when we come back right after this. Coming up on the next Leap Year on Nightstand, it's Nutty Teen Sex Stories. Okay, so you sneak into your girlfriend's room in the middle of the night. It's pitch black. You make love all night. When the sun comes up the next morning, her dad's lying next to you. <laughs> Then what happened? <laughs> Find out on Nightstand. <laughs> Folks, we're running short on time. We're running short on time, so here's a quick recap. Topic, cult. Linda, cult member. Yanni, cult leader. Mole, cult cheater. Mom, cult breeder. And Dr. Lonnie as the deprogrammer. <laughs> yeah, here's a question. Yes, Dr. Lonnie, you say you're a deprogrammer. Have you ever deprogrammed anyone successfully? What did, what did I say before the break? I said we were going to meet someone who Dr. Lonnie had successfully deprogrammed. I'm sorry, I guess I didn't hear you. Y you have to listen, okay? You have to listen. So, uh, uh, Dr. Lonnie, what is the key to deprogramming? Well, Dick, cults rob people of their individuality. So the key to deprogramming is to give the victims back their own distinctive personality. Which you have done with Rob, a patient you have successfully deprogrammed. Welcome to the show, Rob. Great to be here, Dick. 
<laughs> now, uh, Rob, you credit Dr. Lonnie with restoring you to your original personality, is that right? Absolutely. This man is a god who turned my life around. Now I've got a great job successfully recruiting other people like me to get out of cults. <laughs> I'll tell you, Dick, it's very rewarding work. You know, you look at one of these kids in the eyes and you want to say, join up with us. Come on. <laughs> okay, now, we told you that Linda's mom was waiting backstage. She hasn't spoken to her daughter in two years, until now. You want to meet the mom? Yeah. Come on out, mom! Hello, Shirley, hello, hello, hello. Yes, yes, yes. Hi. Anything you'd uh, like to oh, say? I just want to talk to my daughter. I, I love her. Uh, no, I just no, 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 you can't. You, no, no, no touching. Remember, we but, agreed before but, the but show. I, I just want no, to no, 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 Shirley, 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 come here, come here. I, I, I want to talk to you for a second. I know this is very hard for you. Your little girl is right there, the, the little girl you once carried. So sweet. The same little girl who once suckled on your now withered breast. <laughs> <laughs> so come on over here. Have a seat. Now, this is Yanni, the man who stole your daughter. Now, sit down. And when I say go, I want you to let him have it, okay? Go. This is all your fault. You took my daughter from me. Shirley, I didn't take your daughter. She found me. I'm just here to receive lost soul. I don't want to talk to you. I want my daughter back. I love her. I love her, too. Just like... Just like I love you. What do you know about me? Yeah, what do you know about her? I know she weighs 124 pounds. That's right. And I know that you raised your daughter by yourself, and that was tough, wasn't it? Yes. It was. So what? And when she left, you felt all alone, didn't you? Well... Shirley, when you were by yourself, you were definitely alone. Well... <laughs> okay, yes, I was. I was... I was very alone. My daughter was the apple of my eye. Her ninth grade science teacher told me that she could be the next Christy McCullough. Christy? <laughs> You, Christy you, McCullough? You know, the, the lady that got blown up in the Challenger? You know what? I know nothing about auto racing. I'm sorry. Mom, yeah. even though I left home, you weren't alone. I wasn't? No, you weren't. Why not? Because, Shirley, Yeri teaches us that even though we weren't there, we're here. And here and there is everywhere. <laughs> Do you know what that means? I do. Dick, I'm talking to Shirley. <laughs> do you understand that, Shirley? I, I, I guess it makes sense. It's just that... Stop this! She's falling for it! Let the people work it out, Mole. <laughs> Come with us, Mom. I mean, Breeder. We'll tell you more about it. I suppose... Do you have any literature? Better. I have a hug. Oh. Oh. Dr. Lonnie, it looks oh. like you could be losing one. Oh. That's it. That is it. If you are not going to stop this, I am. Mo, what are you doing? You're Mo, 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 what are you doing? Mo, get it off. This is crazy. What's going on here? Constitution ring, but at least it's not a cult. <laughs> Mole or Amber, whatever your name is. Well, folks, we got another family back together. <laughs> you know, folks, some kids go to college. Some get apartments. Some go to Europe. Some join cults. I once joined a group. We had oaths, secret handshakes, rituals, and initiations. It was called the Sigma New House, and it was the greatest thing I ever did. <laughs> Think about it. For now, I'm Dick Dietrich. Say yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
settled, the females give birth to pups conceived last year and within 48 hours are ready to mate. Being regularly obliged by the male who services all the other members of his harem and any others if he can manage it. With the season over, the males lose their aggressive traits, returning to their normal, sociable behaviour. 